or the Center for Democracy and Development focuses on highlighting the conditions for improvement of the electoral process. Professor Victor Detula is a member of the Center's Election Analysis Center, and he joins us now to discuss how election malpractices, rigging, and manipulation of results could impact tomorrow's governorship and state houses of assembly elections. Professor, thank you for joining us on Newsday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now, of course, I'm sure you must have seen um, the report from this day where even the, uh, the government, the, the presidency, has confirmed that there are plans to frustrate the efforts of INEC tomorrow. One of the, the aspect I want to focus on now is when it comes to the BVAS machines. That was highlighted saying that there might be attempts to ensure that it does not work tomorrow. Bearing in mind what happened on February 25th when the INEC server recorded over 12 million attempts to hack into it, do you think that the electoral body is prepared to ensure that the BVAS machines will work tomorrow? Thank you very much. Uh, Nigerians have spoken at various levels, expressing uh, frustration and displeasure over what happened uh, previously. Uh, there is a confidence gap, or if you like, gap in confidence uh, with respect to uh, what the election management body uh, has done. And of course, uh, the electoral management body also has come up repeatedly to assure Nigerians that there's going to be improvement uh, based on lesson learned from this. Of course, uh, no matter how one puts it, it's not likely that uh, Nigeria will easily get convinced about that. Uh, but what is left for us to watch out for is for Nigeria to be on their toes, uh, to monitor the process uh, very effectively and to see where there can be loopholes. But I think, generally speaking, Nigerians are more determined at various levels to make sure that their vote counts. Absolutely. We saw that determination and uh, what one thing that characterized the 25th of February was uh, voter disenfranchisement. Now, the National Human Rights Commission has expressed their concern uh, about the rise in hate speech across the country. I mean, just this morning, uh, well, over the past 24 hours, a video has gone viral of an APC stalwart in Lagos State threatening Igbos not to come out and vote. And, so, and we've seen various instances of this. Now, do you feel that the inability of uh, the police force uh, to deal with uh, some of these statements that are unleashed into the public space uh, will impact uh, the disenfranchisement of voters tomorrow? Yes, uh, I do agree with you that there have been a lot of uh, threats uh, here and there, and Lagos stands out uh, in particular, but there are other places across the country where uh, this, uh, what I call the expression of the frustration following the previous uh, tool uh, have taken place. Of course, there are threats, and uh, the security agencies have to redouble their effort. Uh, one needs to underscore that importance that uh, far more than what happened in the previous election, there is need, and of course there are indications across the country, uh, something similar to that of Lagos, that call for more emphasis, for more involvement. And one can express some uh, optimism uh, on the part of uh, uh, what the security agencies can, can do. Uh, don't let us forget that the INEC framework for managing election security has been expanded to involve the uh, agencies that prior to this time were not member like EFCC uh, with the expansion of this uh, framework and mechanism one will expect that uh, the security agencies are up and doing but it's not only the responsibility of security agencies 
there are other uh, stakeholders that you also be involved. Uh, let me just put it, the citizen themselves should be involved in watching out for people who might want to take advantage of this uh, heightened tension. Thank you, Professor. Now, just wondering, for the everyday Nigerian who's, who's made up their mind to go and exercise their right to vote tomorrow, how do they ensure that they are not suppressed, intimidated, or exploited, and can return home safe and sound while also, you know, being on the lookout if they see something, say something? How do you achieve that balance tomorrow? <laughs> like I said, it's the responsibility of everybody. It is natural. It is natural that when people are being threatened, um, they want to respond, you know, uh, in that way fearfully. But again, I think government agencies, especially government security agencies, need to come out for even within the short spell of time that is still allowed to assure Nigerians, let, 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 let there be an outflow of assurance and even uh, details of what has been put in place to guarantee safety. I think this may go a long way to convince uh, citizens. It's not enough for government to keep quiet when threats are here and there by negative forces. I think it is expected that uh, security officials, uh, head of security agencies in the various locations come out to make pronouncements to give assurance to Nigerians that they are protected and they can come out and vote on Saturday. Right. Now, uh, Professor, an aspect of the February 25 polls that is still going uh, largely undiscussed but was a major talking point for observers was the compromising of the secrecy of the ballot in, in many instances. Uh, several of the international observers did report that they found that uh, in most cases people were unable to cast their ballot uh, secretly. Um, people felt they were monitored and so forth. Now, how do we move on from this? Because we also know that this goes hand in hand with vote buying. Yes, I think it's a mix of uh, two key factors. One bordering on ignorance and the other a way, willingness to cheat or to abuse the, the process. Let's talk about the ignorance. Uh, although civil society organizations have tried in terms of voters' education, and INEC to some extent also have tried, but uh, the political parties themselves uh, have not done much in this area in terms of sensitizing and educating the voters uh, as to what to do. I think uh, that, that partly explains the trend that we observe. The second has to do with uh, people who already resolve to abuse the process. And uh, at this point, this is where the law enforcement comes in. How effective the law enforcement uh, uh, process to make this happen. Uh, I, I think this, this, this is uh, the deficiency of uh, the enforcement uh, has contributed largely to this. How do we go forward from here? Uh, well, people still have to check their attitude. Uh, in this respect, uh, uh, in terms of vote buying, there has to be a, a buyer and a seller. And uh, for me, I think vote buying or vote selling is not only limited to the election day. It's things that has happened days before, and if you like, months before. I think uh, citizen action is important here. Thank you, Professor. Now, the um, headline in, on this day newspaper, I found it a bit, um, I'm trying to look for the word here, it looked like a bit of a um, contradiction almost. It wasn't really a contradiction, but I'll explain what I'm trying to say. Um, the presidency was insisting that the, the elections that just took place on February 25th were free and fair, and at the same time confirmed that 
the, the, this day report of the previous day, which stated that some governors are willing to go to all lengths as far as amassing um, an army of, of thugs, basically, to disrupt the elections tomorrow. Now, to me, that, or how that came across was, it looked as, some might say, it was the first instance where it said that the election was free and fair is in contradiction to what we've seen from the observers. And the other, also, I don't know how you perceived it, but do you think that that might have played, might have contributed in any way to inducing fear whatsoever in, in the electorate? Yes, there was election held. Nigerians have uh, expressed uh, what they felt based on what they perceive to be free and fair or not free and fair. And for me, there was election uh, that had a lot of uh, challenges and room for improvement. Uh, that is my position. Now, regarding what uh, uh, the presidency has said, it depends on what parameters you are using to measure what constitutes free and fair. And uh, the contradiction that you have pointed out that uh, president has also, the presidency has also gone to identify some, uh, some risk factor bordering on uh, what uh, some governors have purported to be saying. I will say that uh, subnational elections are very critical. The stakes are very high. And uh, uh, analytically, I will imagine that uh, there are a lot of things that uh, people involved, actors involved, mediators involved, might want to do that are on towards, just to make sure that they have power. Because the stakes are very high for governors. The stakes are very high for those who want to control power at that level. Because the stakes are high, uh, I know earlier we, you spoke to um, the fact that we as citizens need to take it within our control to, to assure that the day goes smoothly. However, because of the experience that many went through on the 25th of February, you hear reports about people saying, uh, you know, they want to bring security. There were reports of certain groups who were saying they want to come with dogs uh, to the polling unit, which of course is illegal. Uh, but people are now looking for ways to protect themselves. Now, in terms of security, do you think that genuinely, yes, we've seen the assurances, we've heard them, uh, but we heard them before February 25 as well. Uh, do you see that uh, there has been any escalation um, in the deployment of security personnel? And, and secondly, uh, earlier in the week, INEC um, released a statement just trying to urge those participating in this election, those uh, candidates, to say that let it be a competition and let it not be war, uh, but uh, it, it seems that um, tensions continue to escalate. Very briefly, uh, do you think there's any way these tensions will be doused by tomorrow morning? Yes, of course, uh, it is expected that this, there will be heightened tension because there is increased frustration from the previous election. It is there in the perception of the people. And of course, based on their frustration, there is heightened tension. As for the deployment of security forces, I don't have the figures, but one also expects that uh, the area of coverage is less than what uh, happened in the presidential election. So one will expect that with heightened tension, that the security agency would deploy more people. And lastly, on citizen action. Of course, it is allowed in the Constitution to protest, to demonstrate, but within the law. You know, citizen action has to be conducted within, within the, law. the law. And that is what I think and within uh, the law. Absolutely. That's what uh, I think. Thank you. Thank you kindly, yeah. uh, Professor Victor Adetula. Thank you for your insight, and uh, we wish you a, a happy voting day tomorrow. Mm -hmm.